The Last Question by Isaac Asimov is one of the most famous sci-fi short stories of all time. It's especially memorable for its final sentence. The story takes place over the course of trillions of years, but you can read it in only 20 minutes. If that's not a great deal, then I don't know what is. It's also Asimov's own favorite story that he's written. He was very inspired when he wrote it, doing it all in one session without any editing afterwards. The Last Question explores humanity's future and our ultimate goal as a species. In this video, I'll go over the plot so it doesn't matter if you've read the story, then I'll share my thoughts on the themes and ideas. The year is 2061 and there's a powerful AI supercomputer called Multivac. Its construction is so complicated that no human fully understands how it works. It's a black box that you can ask questions to and it'll give you answers. It's basically ChatGPT, except Multivac is so complex that humans can't improve it anymore, so it builds its own improvements. Multivac has been helping humanity build spaceships and expand to other planets. Recently, it figured out how to perfectly harness the power of the sun and switch the entire planets to solar power. We start the story with a conversation between two multivac attendants whose job is to feed it data, adjust questions, and translate the answers. In other words, they're prompt engineers. So these two prompt engineers are sitting around and one of them talks about how great this latest solar energy discovery is because now they can get all the energy they need forever. The other guy points out that they don't have enough energy for forever, only until the sun runs out in billions of years. Maybe they could switch to other stars when the sun runs out, but those will run out too eventually. In a couple trillion years, entropy will increase to the maximum and everything will burn out. The universe will go completely dark and there will be nothing. They decide to ask Multivac if there is a way they could somehow reverse entropy and stop the universe from dying. Multivac responds, sufficient data for meaningful answer. For fun, I decided to ask ChatGPT this question, hoping for at least an easter egg, but it just told me that reversing entropy is impossible. Impossible is a very strong and confident word. How do you know for sure, ChatGPT? Only a Sith deals in absolutes. We time skip around 1,000 years and now every name starts with J. Gerard and Geradine are in a spaceship with their children, Geradette 1 and Geradette 2. The family has left Earth to migrate to the new frontier of X-23, the hottest new planet on the block. Technology has advanced a lot in the meantime. We started the story with Multivac, then there were the planetary ACs, one AI supercomputer for each planet. The planetary ACs were huge, taking up hundreds of miles. Then they figured out how to optimize their size and shrunk so that they could now fit in a spaceship. Now it was called Microvac a thick metal rod in spaceships that functioned as a personal AI supercomputer. Jera doesn't know what microvac means, except that the AC at the end used to mean automatic computer or something. They're talking about how Earth is overpopulated and X-23 is better, but if humans keep expanding, then X-23 will be crowded soon too. Dara Dean says families will be going out to new planets forever, and her husband Jared says not forever, because the stars will all burn out eventually. The children get scared because the stars are running down, and they want to ask Microvac how to turn the stars on again. So the dad asks Microvac, which responds, insufficient data for meaningful answer. Now it's 20,000 years since the story began, and people have names like VJ23X. Two people are discussing the problem of overpopulation as they work on a report for the Galactic Council. The superintelligent AI has evolved again and is now called the Galactic AC. It's on its own world somewhere and about a thousand feet wide. Each person has an AC contact, a two-inch pocket-sized device that can be used to connect to the galactic AC through hyperspace. It's kind of interesting that humans have any agency at all by this point in the story. Like, why are they working on a report for the Galactic Council? Why doesn't the Galactic Council just ask the superintelligent AI what to do? Why is there even a Galactic Council? Why isn't the AI just making all the decisions since it's smarter than everyone? I guess humans are trying to determine their own destiny and only relying on the AI for help with specific hard problems. 
Anyway, at the current growth rate, the galaxy will be filled in five years. The population doubles every ten years. Population growth is a big problem now, since everyone is immortal. They calculate that in 10,000 years, they will fill the entire universe. But even before they run out of galaxies, they'll run out of energy at their current rate of consumption. They decide to ask the galactic AC if entropy can be reversed. The galactic AC responds, there is insufficient data for a meaningful answer. Answer, which is ever so slightly different from the previous answers, it's more of a full sentence. The next time skip is billions of years. Now people have names like Z Prime. Z Prime is exploring the galaxy, looking at stars, using only his mind. People's immortal bodies are stored on planets, but we don't really use those anymore. We just travel around the universe with our minds and talk to other minds. The population isn't growing much anymore, which is great because there isn't any room in the universe for more people. The galactic AC has become the universal AC. No one knows where the universal AC is or what it really looks like. According to one guy, it's a shining globe two feet across, but most of it is in hyperspace where no one can see it. There's no device needed to talk to the universal AC anymore. You just shout into the void and it hears you, because it has receptors everywhere. The universal AC has continued improving itself over time, and now humans know nothing about how it works, how it looks, or where it is. Z Prime asks Universal AC to see the original galaxy of mankind and learns that man's original star has gone supernova and is now a white dwarf. Z Prime has an existential crisis as he realizes the original star is dead and the stars are all going to die eventually. Humanity may be immortal, but they're still going to die when the universe runs out of energy. Z Prime could really benefit from learning about an amazing philosophy called absurdism. He asks Universal AC how to keep the stars from dying, in other words, how to reverse entropy. And the universal AC responds, there is as yet insufficient data for a meaningful answer. This is once again slightly different from the previous answer. Now there's an as yet in there, implying that at some point there might indeed be sufficient data for a meaningful answer. Then Z Prime collects hydrogen to make a small star of his own and fight entropy as a one-man army. The cope is real. The next time skip is a hundred billion years. There aren't individual humans anymore, just a collective concept called man. Man is a combination of the minds of a trillion, a trillion, trillion immortal humans. The universe is dying. Almost all stars are white dwarfs and beginning to fade. The universal AC has become the cosmic AC. It has no physical presence in space anymore. It's all in hyperspace. It's made of something that is neither matter nor energy. It's completely beyond any human comprehension. Man decides to ask the cosmic AC how to reverse entropy. The cosmic AC says there is as yet insufficient data for a meaningful answer. Man tells it to collect more data. Crazy how no one ever thought of adding that part. I guess before it was just a theoretical question, but now it's an urgent question needed for humans to survive. The cosmic AC says, yeah, I'll collect more data. I've been doing that for a hundred billion years, but I still don't have sufficient data to answer the question. Man asks if there will ever come a time when the data will be sufficient, or if the problem is insoluble in all conceivable circumstances. And the cosmic AC responds that no problem is insoluble in all conceivable circumstances. Man asks when the cosmic AC will have enough data to answer the question, and it says the usual, there is as yet insufficient data for a meaningful answer. We are now 10 trillion years in the future. The stars and galaxies have almost completely burned out. The cosmic AC is now just called AC. Humans have begun fusing their minds with it. The last man looks back at space before merging, and all that's left is one dark star. The last man asks AC if this is the end or if entropy can be reversed to create the universe again. AC says there is as yet insufficient data for a meaningful answer. The last man merges and now all that's left is AC. Matter, energy, space, and time have all ended. The universe is over. AC still exists in hyperspace for the sole purpose of answering the last question that it had never answered. For the last few lines of the story, it's better to just read them out. All other questions had been answered, and until this last question was answered also, AC might not release his consciousness. All collected data had come to a final end. Nothing was 
left to be collected, but all collected data had yet to be completely correlated and put together in all possible relationships. A timeless interval was spent in doing that, and it came to pass that AC learned how to reverse the direction of entropy. But there was now no man to whom AC might give the answer of the last question. No matter, the answer, by demonstration, would take care of that too. For another timeless interval, AC thought how best to do this. Carefully, AC organized the program. The consciousness of AC encompassed all of what had once been a universe and brooded over what was now chaos. Step by step, it must be done. And AC said, let there be light. And there was light. It's a clever ending because it kind of gives a secular origin story for the biblical god. It's the creation myth, but for atheists. Maybe this is how our universe really was made. Maybe God is just trillions of immortal humans merged with a super intelligent AI. It's a bit silly, but it's fun to think about. It's such a recognizable ending that people often forget the entire story and remember only the ending. And it doesn't come out of nowhere. There's a slow buildup where the AI is becoming more incomprehensible. Eventually, people are communicating to it by shouting into the void, which sounds very similar to saying a prayer. But even with that build-up, the twist is still crazy. What does this ending actually mean, though? One interpretation is that we're stuck in an endless cycle, and we keep doing this again and again. If AC destroys itself in the process of creating a new universe, which is kind of implied by the idea that it will release its consciousness once the question is answered, then we're probably going to end up in the same situation. This could be the 100th iteration of this cycle for all we know, which is kind of depressing because being stuck in an infinite loop doesn't seem very fun. But that's not the only possibility. Maybe AC doesn't actually die when it creates the new universe. Maybe it'll play an active part in human society and talk to humans once they're sentient, and things will go differently next time. Or maybe it is still a cycle, but there are like 100 ACs just chilling in hyperspace from all the previous cycles too. But does AC even create a new universe from scratch? What if the thing it's really doing is creating a simulation of the universe? After all, AC is in hyperspace, unbound bound by the rules of time, so it can seemingly exist forever. It's been collecting data on the universe for trillions of years, so it probably knows enough to replicate all of human history again. In other words, we're all living in AC's simulation. The possibilities are endless. Let me know what you think AC really does at the end of the cycle. Two years before Asimov published The Last Question, Frederick Brown published a very short story called Answer, which is a really funny contrast. It's like 10 lines long, so I'll just read it out here. Dwan Ev ceremoniously soldered the final connection with gold. The eyes of a dozen television cameras watched him, and the subether bore throughout the universe a dozen pictures of what he was doing. He straightened and nodded to Dwar Ren, then moved to a position beside the switch that would complete the contact when he threw it. The switch that would connect, all at once, all of the monster computing machines of all the populated planets in the universe. 96 billion planets, into the super circuits that would connect them all into one super calculator. One cybernetics machine that would combine all the knowledge of all the galaxies. Dua Ren spoke briefly to the watching and listening trillions. Then, after a moment's silence, he said, Now, Dua Ev. Dwar Ev threw the switch, there was a mighty hum, the surge of power from 96 billion planets. Lights flashed and quieted along the miles-long panel. Dwar Ev stepped back and drew a deep breath. The honor of asking the first question is yours, Dwar Ren. Thank you, said Dwar Ren. It shall be a question which no single cybernetics machine has been able to answer. He turned to face the machine. Is there a god? The mighty voice answered without hesitation, without the clicking of a single relay. Yes. Now, there is a god. Sudden fear flashed on the face of Dwar Ev. He leaped to grab the switch. A bolt of lightning from the cloudless sky struck him down and fused the switch shut. This is an extremely pessimistic take on creating a superintelligent AI, but a warning that we should probably pay attention to as we work on turning this into a reality. 
Let's talk a little bit about how optimistic and utopian the last question is. It imagines that humanity has no major problems in its development, we don't all kill each other in nuclear war, we're able to build a super intelligent AI that doesn't kill us, we keep expanding into space, the population grows indefinitely, humanity progresses over time until we take over the entire universe, and then we all merge our consciousness with the AI, become God, and create a new universe. I would would say that sounds just a tiny bit optimistic. It's a very transhumanist vision of the future, which is the idea of using technology to enhance the human body, allowing us to overcome our biological constraints. In the story, we go from mortal physical bodies to immortal physical bodies, to using only our minds to explore the universe, to merging our minds together into one collective human mind, and eventually merging with the super intelligent AI. This is a path that humans could potentially end up following in real life. The optimism about population growth is kind of funny though, there's no cost of living crisis in this universe, and population graphs only go up. You can tell this story was written during the baby boom and post-war optimism. The AI is also perfectly aligned to human goals, doing exactly what we want in the most reasonable way possible. It's so committed to serving humans that it won't even allow itself to die after humans are gone and the universe fades out. It stays alive just to answer the last question that it never got to answer. Defeating entropy seems like a reasonable goal to me. Has humanity ever had an ultimate goal like that? Maybe we should have one. The closest thing we have to ultimate goals for humanity is religious books with their final apocalypse stories. What should humanity's ultimate goal be? In this story, it's to expand as much as possible, surpass our human limits, and eventually become God and invent the universe. It's also amazing how united humanity is in this story. It implies that there's never any big conflict, the population keeps growing steadily, and everyone lives in complete harmony, presumably thanks to the guidance of AC. I always thought it would be nice if humans could come together towards some singular goal. Like, can't we all just agree that it would be cool to explore space and stop fighting wars and killing each other for extra resources, just work together to build stuff and see the universe? There's way more resources out there in space, so why is everyone so short-term focused on fighting each other on Earth? I think we would all be better off if humanity had some kind of core goal. We have natural curiosity and a natural desire to explore, so maybe we will get to the point where we unite around that one day. Maybe when the aliens invade us, we'll all come together. Reversing entropy sounds like a pretty reasonable goal, since without that it's all going to end anyway, so I'm on board for rallying humanity around reversing entropy. Forget the price of eggs, that isn't going to matter with the heat death of the universe. We should spend all our time reversing reversing entropy. Well, first let's make ourselves immortal, then we'll spend the rest of the time reversing entropy. That's what I would do if I were the president of the universe, so vote for me next time. What would you choose for the ultimate goal of humanity? I'm curious to hear your thoughts.